Hi, it's Peter Skin again. Uh, here's another video of the uh, current uh, FreeSpeak software. Uh, this is the over the assignment screen, which shows each of the PL channels in there. Here's a, a one that I'm calling A referee, A referee ISO, A stage manager audio, B referee, B referee ISO, B stage manager, a help channel, which is a group. Uh, helps, which is the party line, lights, light ISO, production, and RF cam. Each one of these, you can see the little green dot indicates that a port has been connected to these. And here over on the left, you can see that all these are all the ports. And on one of them, the help channel, there are two ports connected to it. So that help channel is connected not only to the group, but to the party line. So if we go now into the overview screen, you can see all the belt packs that are currently out and running. This is mine right here, and I can key the audio button. And you see the red light go on, so I can see button activity. Here's the volume controls here. I can turn down the production volume control. There B goes away, and I'll turn it back up really loud. Okay, so I can see the problem. Volume control. Here's my battery. Here's my battery level. And here's my signal strength level. This clicking here will take me uh, to the screen which shows uh, the status of my bell pack, what kind of RSSI I have, etc., and what the permanent uh, panel uh, fixed mode is. And then over up to the right of my name, I can click here and go directly to the role entry for this belt pack. So I have audio production, AREM, helps and help there. I'm also a group membership of help. Every belt pack in the system, if I go to this one here on their reply button, has a help button so they can talk to me and uh, ask for comms help go about here to the, to the device menu here in the station I've set up one port in the station to be called BREF this is a party line called BREF and I have a uh, uh, an adapter I made to go in the headset jack on the front um, which allowed me to get a total of nine ports into the system uh, here I've turned off the turned down the the, the side tone and uh, uh, which which makes it as, as more of a four wire than than before one thing that is not available on this uh, key on the station is a new function called force talk and force listen which is available on belt packs so I have to make sure I turn on the talk I latch on the talk for that port if I go back here to assignments, you can see one of the assignments right here, the B ref has a station connected to it. So that's the four wire input and output for that particular party line. Uh, there's a slight bug in this screen that all, not all of the lines show, but you can see that when I push the audio button, uh, it, it's fairly responsive to uh, uh, people talking. So here, here's my channel, so I'm gonna press it on three. One, two, three. So you get a good indication of who's talking. Um, and it, this is the screen I normally sit on, so if somebody's talking and they're too loud or too soft, I can get an idea of actually who that person is. Um, in the uh, roll screen, where I would adjust the volume would be here on the input level, so here on my belt pack, I have the input level at 7 dB because this particular headset I'm using tends to be a little quiet. I tend to turn the master volume down a little bit. Here I'm at minus 20, um, which puts my individual volume control more mid-range. And I also uh, uh, set my side tone uh, sometimes down pretty low. It's actually pretty high right now. Um, 
a new feature allows you to actually adjust, set the uh, microphone type uh, on your belt pack here in the in the software. So here you can have microphone type, electret, dynamic, and automatic. Used to be only adjustable from within the uh, pack. Another feature is up on top here. It's a checkbox for local settings. So if I turn this on and uh, somebody has their an advanced menu, they can go in and change the levels, change their side tone, change their mic top. That would be the belt packs would take priority rather than whatever was edited in this screen here. Uh, another little bug I found that the switch volume control sometimes is forgotten in the belt pack. So every once in a while, if I particularly if I have a report of that, I'll select all, go to the uh, menu key operation, and toggle between listen again and switch volume control just to force them all back into being uh, switch volume control. Uh, back here on the device screen in ports, um, you can do it like you did before, select the channel assignment for each particular port right here, um, but it's more graphic to go to the assignment screen and here you can select a four-wire port. Here I can remove this audio port from the audio PL by clicking that and then I can, because this is selected, I can add it back into the audio screen. Uh, all in all, it's a, an interesting improvement in what they've had before. There are a couple of features which aren't actually implemented yet, uh, but the software is started here down in the bottom of the uh, overview screen, you can see logic inputs and logic outputs on the base. Um, and then in the belt pack, each individual role, you have, uh, uh, let me see if I can bring this up here, logic input options um, in the belt pack select different things like activating a key or activating a configured action, lots of different things. I haven't actually figured out how to make this really work yet, um, but, it's, but it's interesting that it's coming. Um, I've turned on the, uh, uh, for most of the people, turned on the call alert mode because here in overview you have the ability to send a text to a belt pack or to all belt packs. If I enter text in here and then um, pressed all call, it would go to all belt packs. Or I could select an individual belt pack to make the text go to that belt pack. Another nice thing is the count of how many belt packs are actually on each antenna. We have a 17 belt packs operational. This particular antenna has five belt packs on it. Um, and anything less than five is green. So I was able to see on this particular show that there was a, a big load of bell packs out in the front of house. This litter is at front of house about a thousand feet from me and uh, I, or rather, uh, yeah, 300 feet from me. And um, so I ran it out via fiber here and in the device menu under station, I set the port number two to be fiber. So I ran it out to there and put three antennas out there. Um, you have the original screen here for setting labels on your antennas and uh, sync offsets they call it now, not cable lengths. They're really sync offsets. But you can see this same thing here in the overview screen. When you look at a particular antenna you can see the device name and uh, you can uh, change the name right here. You can't change the sync offset, but you can change the name. They've added logging, so there's logging for each antenna, like if it goes offline. And then there is logging, global logging in the device for every device that's going on and off and, and talks. So here we've got 
271 pages of this information, which can be exported, uh, but there's no way to use it anyway. I think it's a, a, for ClearCom to do uh, troubleshooting because there's no way to use this. If it, were, if it was able to be exported as a, a CSV file or something like that, then you might be able to uh, search it for a particular information. And that's about it. Um, I did find that in the roles, uh, occasionally you'll have a role that if you try to clone it, you get an error that says something un undecipherable, um, exactly one schema in one of, whatever that means. Uh, and I found that you can delete this and, and create a new one, and that new one then doesn't have that, that effect. So here's a, a role that I uh, did that to, and now I can clone that role, and I make a new role, and I can then delete that role. Um, if I were wanted to change one of these people, I would then just create a new role and edit it so it had all the same settings, and then go into the uh, assigned role screen, um, like, like let's say assigned role screen for this particular belt pack here, and I would change the fixed role to that new role, and it would, the belt pack would automatically be switched over to the other role, and I would go back and I could delete the other entry. One thing you have to be careful though, if you create a new role, if any other role refers directly to that role, you have to go in and edit them. So for instance here, George uh, has several people that talk to him directly. So John, up here, he talks directly to George and to Chris. So when I changed George's role, I had to go through all the belt packs and rechange the George role so it actually matched what it should have been. There was a new role, I had to change it to a new one. And once I changed everybody over to new role, then I could delete the old wall. Uh, this is this particular software here is version 1519. I understand there is a 15111 version uh, that they're working on right now. And as soon as they verify this is all right, they'll put it up on their website. Um, I would assume fixing things like the graphics and these couple little things I've mentioned that aren't working very well. But all in all, it's pretty good. On a side note, the um, software, the belt pack role, uh, the belt pack um, version, if I look here, the belt pack version, I'm running the 1732, which is has a lost packet concealment uh, feature. That if a packet isn't transmitted, it takes an older packet and sends it. So you have a little bit more latency, not noticeable, but it gets rid of all of the raspiness and unevenness in the uh, in the audio. Particularly when people walk, you often had that kind of thing. Or people, some people held the bell pack in their hand and waved it around. You had that kind of thing. So that's all about right now, and uh, I'll do another one when I get the new software.